Okay. And so you can read that theorem, okay? But we're, we're not gonna focus too much on it uh, in class because um, it's, it's not as relevant to the broader set of PEDs that we're gonna study, okay? So take a look at Koshi Kovalevsky here, okay? And uh, also make sure you understand these aspects of uh, different classifications of second order P. Okay. The thing that I want to um, get into now, okay, before we move on to uh, other solution methods, is the notion of using balance laws to derive PEs. Okay. So the idea with a balance law is that we're going to equate okay, different uh, rates that some quantity enters and exits a region okay, with the rate it's created and destroyed, okay? So everything needs to balance out, okay? And if, as long as you have uh, formulas associated with uh, enter, entry, creation, destruction of some quantity, you can build a PD, okay? So it's, it's fine and well, okay, to have ways of classifying PDs and proving their existence, okay? But I want to give a little bit of an idea for where these PDEs come about, uh, that how these PDEs come about that we're going to talk about. Okay, so the first part that we have to think about when we're building a model is the geometry of the domain that we're in, and we'll say that that's some shape in uh, Rn. Okay, so I'm going to draw that over here, okay? Here's Rn, it's gonna just sort of look like R2 in this case. And um, within there, there's this region U, okay? And within there, we're gonna have some region V, okay? That things are gonna pass in and out of, okay? And so we're gonna say let V be an open subset of U with some smooth boundary, okay? DV, okay? should be a partial dv, okay, with outward normal v of x, okay, where x is going to live on dv, okay. So this thing here is our unit normal going out of v, okay, and so, for instance, if we have diffusion, okay, we want to be able to keep track of how much uh, stuff comes into this region V and how much stuff is leaving. And maybe there's also chemical reactions that produce uh, the, the substance in there or, or annihilate it, which we're tracking, okay? So, we're thinking about some substance, okay, and this could be the mass density of a gas, okay, and it's important that it's the density, okay, we could have the bacterial density from some bacterial colony in a population, we could have the momentum density of some fluid, 
Okay, so you have some fluid swirling around in this this region U. Okay, and it passes in and out of the of the region. Okay, so we're going to call it our favorite sort of unknown variable name, lowercase u of x t, and of course x is going to live in our region u. Okay, so we can derive a PDE by just asking how much substance, okay, is in V and how does it flow in and out to change that, okay? Well, we know that the amount of substance A of T, if we have the density, it's going to be given by the integral over V of uh, u of x t dx. Okay, great. So clearly this depends on time. Okay. And so we want to know how much, okay, can the amount change, okay? So there's different ways that it can change. First of all, you could have flux through the boundary, right? If we go back here and you look at this, things are going to come in and out of this region and that's gonna change the total amount of substance in V, okay? So in order to keep track of that, let's define a function q of xt, which is going to be our flux, okay? So this is going to have to be a vector valued function defined on x, or vector valued flux function, okay? And so for instance, if you is some um, mass density, okay? Then as you move mass around, Q is gonna be your momentum density, okay? Mass moved around by velocity, okay? So the total flux through the boundary of dv, okay, is going to be what? Well, whenever we need a total, we can just take an integral, okay, and that's going to be the integral of q of xt, importantly scaled by this normal, uh, integrated along that, that boundary, okay, so we're going to have a, an integral over ds. Okay, so this dot product ensures that we're properly taking the flux precisely as it flows through the boundary. Because the boundary could be curved, and so there's going to be a, a normal that moves around. Okay, and so this is going to really properly keep track of how substance is actually flowing across our boundary. You always want to look normal for that. Okay. Of course, this is not the only way we could have uh, substance density changing. We could have creation destruction. You know, you could have um, uh, a, a container that has a drain on it. And you could have chemical reactions that are uh, producing different substances and you have to keep track of all of them. Okay? And all of this can be defined by this function we'll call f of x t, which is the uh, creation destruction function. Okay. Creation destruction function, okay? The very 
dystopian sounding name to it. Okay, and it's going to be a rate density. Okay, so the net rate of creation and destruction is going to be in V given by the um, so that is not the vector assumption. In V, that's given by just the integral of this function over the volume. Okay, you're going to look everywhere in the volume and see uh, where you're creating and destroying. Okay, so now we can put all this together in step four and write this as a balance law. Okay. What's a balance law? It's just a bookkeeping device, really, that tells us uh, how everything adds up to produce a change in concentration in some region. Okay. So the question is, how does this thing A of T change? Okay. Up here. And that's going to be the derivative with respect to time, of course, of our right hand side of that definition up there. Okay. In other words, the derivative, the integral over the derivative in time of u. Okay. Now, again, in order to pass this in, we need to assume continuity of u. Okay. But we know that there's going to be two main sources of uh, change in concentration. Okay, first of all, we have the flux. And because that flux is going to be the flux out because we've dotted it with the normal, we're going to subtract off the, the net flux out. And we're going to add in the net creation and destruction terms here, okay? So this now is starting to look something like a PD, right? Except it has this odd um, integral over the boundary, okay? But we should know from vector calculus how to deal with integrals over boundaries and how to convert them to um, integrals over volumes, okay? You should be thinking in your mind, Divergence theorem is going to show up shortly. Okay, so let's let's first of all talk a bit about interpretation of this. So what's the interpretation? Okay, is that if Q okay points out of V, okay then this integral q dotted with v ds is going to be positive okay which is going to decrease okay or de which decreases Uh, the substance amount. So again, just reiterating why the minus sign is there. Okay. Okay. So that's one thing. Okay. The other thing is that F greater than zero basically implies creation of substance and F less than zero implies destruction of substance, okay? 